be a qualitative difference, particularly in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, if you practice meditation uh, with others mm -hmm. as well as solo, do you uh, have experience with that or have a neuroscientific uh, <laughs> of that? <laughs> Neuroscience is pretty lean on that. <clears throat> Um, it's pretty much common experience, even in the Bible. You're a biblical expert, amongst many other things. But you know, whether two or more are gathered together in my name, and therefore, am I also there, or something like that. So I think that <coughs> that experience holds true. Like everybody feels that <coughs> something happens when you get into a group. Maybe not a hundred, but if you get in a group of you know, four, five, six, seven, um, the energy changes. We've talked a lot in the past about energy coherence and about how when you get out of the way, <clears throat> there's less of an I there, what manifests is different and you're more in alignment with the other people who are not so much there as an I. And so that seems to feed upon itself. It gets stronger and it's much clearer, in my experience. It really does. It, it, it feels like on the one hand, particularly you know when one is starting a practice, mm -hmm. that it's good to have that sort of routine where, you know, other people are going to be there, so, right. so uh, you know, I'll, I'll do that. But, but I think it's also, as you said, there's something qualitative that happens when a group forms. And, and I do think it's interesting that there's not much science on the science of meditation together. Mm -hmm. um, and that it feels like there's something that is uh, kind of enabled about the non-dual experience, about mm -hmm. it being multiple players, mm -hmm. as it were, that, uh, you know, when I sit down and there's somebody sitting next to me and we get still together, it somehow doesn't as encourage as much this idea of, I am meditating now, right. as opposed to, there is meditating occurring <laughs> uh, uh, in, in all directions here. Mm -hmm. And it's almost as if that is felt mm -hmm. and that that entrains even, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, each other. So I, I, I think at least um, on, a tuitive, on an intuitive and experiential level, it's really something worth encouraging mm -hmm. uh, that, um, you know, getting together actually potentiates the non-dual mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. um, as well as solitude. Yeah. I think back to the <clears throat> times I said in Zen Seishins where there can be 20, 30, 40, 50 people and you sit basically all day long for five, six, seven, maybe ten days, except for, except for meals and little task. And you really do get completely as one. I mean, it's a real, first night, first day, it's like, oh, 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 trying to get yourself positioned out and everything, and this is what this environment like. But by the second or third day, you really are one entity just meditating together. And it really does use the word like, like passing over or sustaining somebody else. You know, somebody has a, you can feel it's a break, then the energy of the group or the energy of the partner that they're meditating with kind of pulls them on through and keeps them on track. And you get really entrained, I know, in long sit with somebody next to you, the same person always sitting next to you, uh, you really do get entrained with that person and you are meditating as one thing. You really have a sense of that being, you know, not two people anymore. Right, so for example, um, in one of the legal ayahuasca churches in Brazil, mm. the Santa Daime, the mm -hmm. Daimistas, mm -hmm. Uh, a good deal of the ceremony is a kind of collective dancing mm -hmm. where you're precisely in training mm -hmm. each other into one mm -hmm. macro movement uh, together. And I, I do think that that is something analogous is going on mm -hmm. in meditation, that the sort of, the dance in silence, mm -hmm. as it were, um, is being potentiated in each other so that even if you maybe fall off for a second and you start going, oh, well, you know, does it mean anything that I, you know, I'm a Scorpio? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, you get, you get uh, it's almost as if there's a kind of um, collective silence that, that, that holds you up uh, yeah. together. Yeah. But the, <clears throat> the dance metaphor we use all the time, the most recent book, Dancing with the Thought, which you look forward to, uh, is very much like that. It is really, you're dancing together and you, you can watch a, I mean, the thing about dance is you are dancing together. It is syncopation, you are matching beats, you are moving rhythmically. And I think that's very much a part of what we're talking about here, is that meditation with others becomes a dance, your life becomes a dance, but the meditation with others becomes a dance, where everything goes along synchronously. 
if you get asynchronous with the dance, then it doesn't work so well. Then you begin to, oh, you know, she's a lot better than I am over there. Or mm -hmm. Then the dance breaks down. But as long as you stay out of the eye, then it becomes a beautiful, synchronous dance with meditation in your life as well. Right, and the eye can't dance. No, right? the eye can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just cannot dance. I mean, if we, you know, <laughs> think about it, you know, it, you go slowly, like, you, if the eye tries to dance, yeah. it doesn't give up enough of yeah. its uh, control yeah. in order to be with the other dancers. Yeah, it's, it just, just it's asserting even, itself. It's just even watching you know, typical social dancing. You know? I'd rather not, but go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> same thing happens because you know, you're out there and if, if you everybody is really into the music and they're really not into themselves, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Like, the group can really move together. Yeah. But if somebody starts saying, oh, you know, she's a lot better than I am. She's yeah. not as good as I am. Yeah. He's really a klutz over yeah. there. Yeah. Then you can watch, you go out of syncopation, you go out of the dance yeah. because you become an I yeah. identifying with a relationship that doesn't doesn't play into the dance. Yeah, and the difference is is that when you collectively meditate, um, unlike the situation when the eye comes in with uh, in dancing, where you feel more and more need to individuate mm. and assert control, mm. when the eye comes in when you're doing the silent dance of meditation mm. together, it feels wrong. Yes, it, you know you, you, yeah. you feel yourself falling off, right. as opposed to being in that kind of very sweet and right. uh, um, solid space of uh, this collective silent uh, energy well, that we're participating in. Neurochemistry, you know, we do know that <clears throat> dopamine levels, opioids, endogenous opioid levels increase as you get uh, more meditative, as you mm -hmm. become more aligned meditatively. As you pointed out, we become so locked in, the brain so likes this still space that it supports it neurochemically. And leaving it really is not uh, not only disharmonious, but it's really unpleasant. It's an, it's an effort and an unpleasant effort to move out of that deep stillness. Right, so the eye shows up to punch its card, you know, it's like, okay, I'm on duty yeah. now. And you're like, oh, oh, oh. yeah, thanks. So. Yeah, oh. Snooze bar. <laughs> Are you still around? <laughs> it's like, yeah, weren't you fired a long time yeah, ago? You're still you showing up, you have nothing else to show up for? We gave you a slip. Apparently not. Um, so it, 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 does, it does feel like a beautiful thing uh, to meditate together, and uh, this, this sense of uh, collective entrainment is really something uh, worth pursuing and whenever we feel like we're manifesting ourselves as I am meditating, no. we can practice saying meditation is happening. Right.